On this James the Bike Guy, we're taking a look at the 2021 Trek Amanda SL7. This is a pretty exciting new race bike from Trek. It comes with a brand new frame, a new fit, and a totally new ethos for what used to be their lightweight, focused climbing bike. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features and design of this bike. We'll find out what is all new for the new 2021 version as well as find out exactly what it weighs. But before we get into it, consider hitting that subscribe button. That way you can see more videos like this into the future. So checking out this bike, I gotta say it's pretty gorgeous. You know, I've seen a few of these and depending on the color and the spec, they go from looking good to just downright gorgeous. And personally, I like this black to factory team orange color. It's a pretty nice setup and it complements the performance and racy geometry of the new 2021. And that's probably the most important thing to talk about with the 2021 is that this is a totally new fit. So Trek has historically had their H1 performance race fit, which was usually only available on the top of the line carbon frame, the SLR. And then for the SL versions, they would have an H2 fit which split the difference between their more relaxed geometry on say the Trek Domani endurance bike and that H1 race fit on the SLR version. Now the SLR and the SL were available in that H2 fit and it slotted the bike in nicely where you could have a performance oriented bike that was still reasonably comfortable. Well for 2021 they've taken that a notch further with something called H1.5. So that means this bike is a little bit lower in the front end and a little bit longer than the H2, but not quite as aggressive as an H1. And the neat thing here is this is kind of adding a little spice or making it just a little bit more race oriented. And I think that's a neat thing because the other thing they added to this bike was aerodynamics. So originally Trek had their Domani as the endurance kind of long range road bike then they had the Madone, which became into this all out super fast aero road bike. And then they had the Amanda, which was just lightweight and climbing oriented. Well, in this case, they've now added some of the aero bits to the lightweight. And I think that that's a pretty apt adjustment because aero is happening anytime you're riding because you're cutting through the air. And Trek makes a pretty interesting claim on this bike. So it uses their cam tail foils foil shapes like you've seen on many of their other bikes in the past, but they claim that this bike is 18 seconds faster per hour for a 70 kilogram rider at 350 watts going up an 8% grade. So what does that actually mean to the majority of us who don't put out 350 watts while we're riding? Well, that means that while you still get a super lightweight bike, it's also gonna be doing some aero advantage for you. So while we might not see quite as big a gains as that, that rider really putting it out on an eight degree incline, it's gonna make the bike feel faster and feeling faster is half the battle. So checking out the bike, we should talk about the frame a little more. So to go along with this H1.5 fit, you've got their OCLV 500 series carbon. And what's really neat about this is Trek is using the same shape, same performance as the SLR, which uses their 800 series carbon. So your finishing and just the beauty of this bike is totally there. And it's gonna come very close in performance to the SLR variant. So in this particular case, Trek claims that the frame is 1142 grams unpainted and the fork which is a full carbon fork, including steerer, comes in at 380 grams unpainted. So that's a bit heavier than the SLR version, but in an SL level or what many brands is just their standard carbon level, it's pretty competitive. The other neat thing is this totally integrated cable routing. So you can see, even though this uses a more traditional bar and stem, it's gonna come in to this port to bring all the cable routing right inside, making it a very nice and tight connection. The other neat thing is this top cap moves with the bike. It's got uh, go, go, go written on the inside, which I think is 
is a really nice touch and it makes for such a gorgeous and clean bike. Now, this being ETAP, it means the drivetrain is wireless. So the wireless drivetrain, you know, it didn't need cables anyways, but uh, yeah, that, that connection and that slickness really shows off this bike. Speaking of the drivetrain, this is the new 12-speed Tram Force drivetrain, even with a cork power meter on the crank set. And that's a really neat feature because that's gonna allow the bike to give you the data about how you're performing. Power is one of the best training tools out there. And I love to see that a race bike is coming with that factory. The Force crank set runs carbon crank arms, a dub bottom bracket, going through Trek's new T47 bottom bracket. This is an industry-wide standard. It's threaded, meaning it's gonna be super easy to service. And then it's running 4835 chain rings, of course, operated by a Force ETAP front derailleur. And then as we go to the back, we've got the ETAP rear derailleur, which has a nice hydraulic clutch to it, keeping the chain super nice and quiet. And then for gearing in the back, this cassette is a 1033. So those numbers might be different than what you were normally used to, but because this is running SRAM's XDR uh, road free hub body, it's allowing the bike to run slightly smaller gears, allowing the drivetrain to be a little bit lighter, but also with the two x 12 getting an even bigger range than say what you would have been used to. For wheels, the bike is set up with another neat and super exciting thing. This has the Aeolus Pro 37 wheels. This is a brand new wheel for 2021. It's a pretty neat setup because it's running DT Swiss 350 internals. It's a 21 millimeter internal width rim and it comes in at a claimed 1685 for weight. And that's pretty impressive considering that it's 37 millimeters deep. It's reasonably affordable and it's such a nice looking wheel set on this. Matched up with Bontrager's R2 tires. These R2s are in a 700 by 25, so a race spec width, and the frame will accept a claimed 28 millimeter width tire, although it's my hunch you could probably fit a little bit larger tire in here. You've got an Aeolus Comp saddle, which is a truncated nose saddle, mounted up on the carbon seat mast. The seat mast idea here allows the seat post to go over the mast of the bike, allowing the bike to ride just as well with a high saddle or a low saddle because it's running through the seat mast. For a handlebar, you're gonna have Bontrager's Pro Carbon Handlebar. This is the VRC size, meaning it's gonna be 100 millimeter reach and 124 millimeter drop. And now that we've taken a look at this bike, let's go ahead and place it on a scale and we'll see what this 2021 Trek Amanda SL7 comes in in weighs. The actual weight of the Trek Amanda SL7 comes in and weighs 17.48 pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the Trek Amanda SL7. Let me know your thoughts on this brand new 2021 model down in the comment section below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It lets me know you enjoyed the video. And then while you're at it, be sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you can see more videos like this into the future.